Grow Your Own is all about what happens when you're able to design living organisms. Imagine you're actually able to take some sort of creature and then design it into a product. What would that look like? The theme of this show is actually a really serious one because um, this type of technology is about to go to a whole new level. In the Science Gallery, we really want people to get involved in the conversation. Do we really want to create this? You know, just because we can, does it mean we should? I'd heard a lot about it, so I was pretty excited to come. Obviously, it's kind of like a moral minefield. It's pretty interesting seeing the speculation um, versus actual science. It's all creative, really creative, and it's quite interactive, so it's, it's really good to enjoying it. Yeah, it seems cool, except for a dolphin baby, which freaks the hell out of me. I like fiction, and then i grow grown up with that. So then, actually, synthetic biology kind of introduced me. This is not only a dream, and not only a fiction, it's maybe possible. We need people to, to really think about this technology. The greatest fear, of course, is that society doesn't accept the technology and that everything around synthetic biology stops. How does society change? Not as a result of distant biotech, but biotech in society, biotech around us, biotech in our lives. What new responsibilities do we have? What new lifestyle do we enter when life becomes a codable thing? So this room is called Grow Your Own Life, and here we're exploring how the boundaries between design life and our own lives might be collapsed by synthetic biology. How spaces between what we make and who we are might merge. So projects like Self Made by biologist Christina Agapakis and Smell Provocateur Cecil Tolas, they've made human cheese using samples of bacteria from different people's bodies. What I did is basically I bought a hair of Elvis Presley on eBay. I proposed to uh, sequence the DNA, take the gene from the hair and put it in a mouse which is also another service that was sort of available uh, to the public. And I was trying to see if, uh, how we would actually people perceive it. Do you have any hopes or fears about the future of synthetic biology? Definitely. <laughs> Someone's going to steal my actual physical identity. Giving birth to dolphins? Probably lots of fears more than hopes. The only fear I'd have is the whole legal side of it, the patenting of genes and things like that. Yeah, I fear that it's not going to come to fruition, that people are going to be too afraid, that there's going to be too, too many stigmas attached to it. Whether it's for better or worse, it's probably going to happen anyway. There should be checks and balances always in place, but I don't see why we shouldn't explore what we can do. So we have a chance with designers and artists coming together to look at synthetic biology, to decide what we want to prioritize and what parts of synthetic biology we feel comfortable with. Because we have one chance before the technology becomes commonplace and before the cat's out of the bag and we don't have a chance to take it back.